I have so much to talk about. I have so much to talk about. I want to speak in chronological order. I want to stick to what's caused the most damage for me. In this video. This video is going to be about gang stalking and corruption in general. I'll have to give you a little bit of a background about myself um, to make it make sense, but This video is really being filmed because I am fresh out of the climax of this story and heading into a new phase within this process and in my life. So, just to give you background information on me that's going to make this story relevant, is that I was a personal trainer, and I stopped being a personal trainer to become an independent contractor. I was having personal issues at home within my relationship and with my family. So, I decided to leave home. And try to start a life with myself and my children. And that's scary enough. But I had a lot of other obstacles that were already at play that I did not consider or didn't feel like I had a reason to consider as strongly as I know now that I should have. And I know now. So when I left home, I went into the nonprofit system for assistance. For women in situations like the one that I was involved in. And at the same time, professionally, I decided to go back into the workforce as an employee. At that time, I wasn't sure what I was going to do exactly because the emotional stress of being in a relationship that was failing, being a service provider to clients, being a mother who has children who are getting ready to go into school, and just being a young person in general having a quarter-life crisis There was just a lot of things to deal with at one time. And this situation has caused all of them to intersect. 
in a way that has been great for business for so many people. It's been profitable for so many people. But it has been devastating to me. And it will, I'm sure, have devastating effects in the lives of my babies. But I'm going to do everything that I can to stop that from, like, taking root and just growing into something crazy. To growing into unstable children, unstable people, like the people who have instigated this and kept it going for me. Okay, that's like a five-minute intro. Let's get into some of the highlights. There are many. I will miss some here. One of the first things that seemed awkward to me is that when I started to work as a personal trainer in this area, I'm in Baltimore County now, I got a stalker. And I'd made numerous police reports against this stalker. And he legitimately was stalking me. He was using other people's gym memberships to come around me, be around me, or as he would put it, go to the gym. They did a little investigation on him. They found out that um, he wasn't a stalker <laughs> and that he was on the up and up. That's what I was told, even though I was extremely frightened. I, play, I paid very close attention to him, and I paid very close attention to him. I paid close attention to everybody, but there was just something about him that made me extra curious about him. Everything I said was disregarded. It was just, oh, you're being crazy. After I called a few times, I was being crazy. That's what the police told me. Before becoming a personal trainer, I already had issues with domestic violence. My home life was already kind of unstable. And by unstable, I mean unbalanced. By unbalanced, I mean I do all the work. Or I did all the work. And by work, I don't mean going to work. By work, I mean putting in emotional effort, keeping everything stable, making sure that we're moving ahead, making sure that we're progressing at a, um, at a steady pace, keeping up with, not the Joneses, keeping up with ourselves, keeping up with the evolution of our bodies of the time spent on this earth. And um, so my home life was emotionally taxing. Let's just put it that way. And Professionally, things started to slip. And of course, it stemmed from that, from knowing that I had to move on, from being a personal trainer, being stalked at a gym, and then eventually my stalker, even after switching, I think it was like two gyms, he found his way into my very workspace. 
And then that was the beginning of the financial instability. So from there, I couldn't call the police anymore. They make it, they made it clear that he didn't do anything. He was just scaring me. They couldn't prevent him from um, going to gyms or doing anything like that. And I wasn't okay with that. I wasn't okay with that in my gut. Something in me wasn't okay with that. He was too comfortable with being a stalker. He, there was something about him that was too comfortable with being investigated. There was something about the investigation that was it wasn't well managed to the point where I felt like I was doing it better and I'm not an investigator I kept him in the back of my mind and I went about my business I went into the homeless program or transitional program within the county that didn't work I went back home. I left again. This time under different circumstances, more serious circumstances because that's how it happens. While I was there, while I was there, I just noticed um, that was the first feeling that I got that I'm a target. Hmm. So, with that information, with being mistreated there and having my children with me, you know, now that's also in the back of my mind. And I don't need to get into all of it, but they started moving me around or moving us around. And everything seemed to be an uphill battle. I want to do this paperwork, it's not going to work. Um, other families are getting preferable treatment. I'm not, I'm working as hard as I can, it's not good enough. It was the first time in my life where I felt like my effort wasn't yielding the results that it should. In the situation, I felt, all right, I'm living with a lot of women. I am dealing with a lot of women. I am coming into a situation where I'm not your typical resident at a homeless shelter or a transitional home. I mean, petty, petty, petty things would set these people off from my wardrobe to my shoes to so many things about me, right? I'm going on dates, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. What, first of all, what does that matter to them? If I'm fulfilling my obligations of going to work, making progress, what does my personal love life have to do with them? It didn't, whatever. My physical safety started to come into question. 
I was getting slash tires, random people coming and fixing it right away. Fast forward, I meet up with my stalker. I'm not going to go into that. But I told him that if I sense that somebody is stalking me, then I'm going to stalk them back. After meeting with him, let me address this. We're in a gym. We're both sexually attractive people, so I'm sure that he was sexually attracted to me, and there was a part of me that was sexually attracted to him, but underlying that that wasn't what was going on because people who are sexually attracted to one another they act in very different ways than the way that this person was acting so whatever he looks good that's not going to blind me to the fact that he may be a threat to my family I continue to work. I continue to go on to job interviews with people, gyms, whatever. I get mistreated at work. I'm getting fired for no reason, all while still living in the um, transitional home. Everything is going wrong. Everything. My car is falling apart. I'm having trouble at work. My children are having trouble at school. My partner is locked up. So many different things. And at one of my last jobs, I meet an individual who has become a celebrity in this situation with me. I don't know what to call us. I I don't know I don't know what to call us. I don't know what his experience is. I don't know what his feelings are about it. And again, my curiosity does not change the abuse that I've endured. These are all, at this point, surface level things, things that are happening in real time with people following me, issues with my car, bill prices changing, calling the police, not getting anybody to answer, or people, police calling me crazy, and so on and so forth. I'd also like to mention that my stalker, of course, had more information on me when I met with him than he should have, which is normal. In meeting with him and talking to some of these people who I was suspicious of, I noticed that they all lived in the same general area of Maryland or had friends or family that lived in that area. So, while I'm living at the transitional home, this individual, this last person that I met, told me he didn't want to have anything to do with me. He told me that he had a reputation that he had to protect. He didn't tell me why he said these things, but he told me that. And I immediately told him how I felt about that. I immediately told him that I felt that he was trying to diminish my worth and that I knew what I was worth and he couldn't tell me something like that about myself. But that's the whole thing, is that the whole part of gang stalking is that they'll diminish your worth, they'll make you confused, they'll try to make you confused about who you are 
what you stand for, what you believe in, the things that you have done, the things that you will do, the person that you will become is part of the game. So I was kicked out of the last transitional home. I was fired from my job. The place that I was working for was there were there were moments of prejudice there that I picked up on and I care I don't care I start to care when it becomes an issue of um, my financial stability right not emotional like I don't care if you're racist if you're racist I care in the sense that I know how to deal with you because I know how you're going to feel that you could deal with me, but it's not going to affect the way that I do my job in any way. But I was fired from that job. I was kicked out of the homeless shelter, transitional home. I was told various things about why they thought my personality wouldn't fit with other personality. I don't know what they're talking about, but that's what they said. All of a sudden, it was a personality issue. It always felt like they wanted to get to know me on a personal level. I'm, and I always felt like, no, we don't need to know each other on a personal level because this is a service. This is a service to help me get from point A to point B because it's a transitional home. I'm in transit. I'm moving. But that hurt their feelings. That hurt their feelings because they validate their worth based off of the need to be needed. And that was the biggest lesson that I learned throughout being homeless and being in a situation where I was dependent on the assistance of others. A lot of things happened within that time span of me leaving there, having issues with um, securing a place to live, having issues with securing employment, having issues with people knowing more about me than they should even when I go to job interviews, having issues with my children being kicked out, removed from school, having issues with random people um, following me to the library, especially after I realized that the church had um, access to my phone and were making jokes and threats using my account as if I posted about my child. That was the end. <laughs> that was the end of that phase in the beginning of a new phase in which I was being aggressively um, targeted. That phase started last October. I reached out to attorneys. I couldn't get anybody to look into it. Everybody was saying that I need proof. I spoke to one attorney who tried to convince me um, that I was crazy. I reached out to radio stations. I reached out to um, the Ricky Smiley Show. I reached out to Cousin Jeff. They didn't believe me or they ignored me. That's a better way of saying it. They ignored me because I don't know if they believe me or not because I never got a response. But shortly thereafter, I caught wind that people do know about what's going on with me. And now everybody else got in on it and began to exploit me even further than I had already been exploited um, within my fragile state. It's been an uphill battle. The only reason why I'm here right now is through divine intervention. And God has been speaking to me through the individual that told me that he didn't want to have his reputation ruined. It's turned into this kind of 
romance. And that's on the spiritual side. That's on something that I do and something that I'm tuned into personally. That's my personal practice, which has gotten me out of this mess. But it turns supernatural for the onlooker or onlookers. It turns supernatural. But I've been dealing with these types of things for a long time. I've been dealing with these types of things for a long time. I am in incredible emotional distress <laughs> and I'm not rambling. I'm trying to put it all into perspective. Once celebrities got wind of this and started to incorporate my story from their vantage point into their songs, into their music, into whatever, into putting pictures of me naked online. And it snowballed into this thing. I don't even know what this thing is, but all I can say about this thing is that I have been lost in it. My day-to-day -day struggle has been lost in it. In investigating them, I've had to relive some things in my life that I never wanted to relive again. My children have gone through so much that they didn't have to go through. And I'm being antagonized and probed and made fun of and being sexualized in so many different ways that take away from the magnitude of what is actually happening that I needed help, that I still need assistance and that people are in my phone, in my life, making money off of my life while I'm suffering. As I'm sitting here every single day trying to get paperwork tr together, trying to make sense of this situation in a way that I could present to an attorney and hopefully I don't run into somebody who is being bribed or who has or that it's a conflict of interest for them to help me because they are also corrupt or dealing with something that is corrupt. I can't speak to what they do behind closed doors. I could only speak to the facts. If you're an attorney and you deal with situations like this, okay, and it's on this magnitude, then there are people that can help me with this investigation. There are tech geniuses that can go into my phone and see what happened and see who's been in there. So everybody has been making money off of me. Everybody who knows about this in some way or another is drawing inspiration from it and their lives are moving forward. And I'm left here alone being physically victimized, emotionally victimized. And I have the weight of my sh weight of the world on my shoulders, or it seems that whenever somebody doesn't want to deal with the hard parts of life, they just throw it onto me and say, oh, she's already doing that. Let's just give her a little bit more. So that's where I am right now. That's where I am. I'm dealing with the realization that even if I move forward, there may still be obstacles because the news and the media knows about what is going on. Do not be fooled. FBI knew about what was going on. Everybody knows about what's going on, but I'm not getting any assistance 
or every time I go to somebody, I'm being turned away. They can't look into it or something like that. They need proof. You are the proof. You are the proof. The the shade that's being thrown, the um, plot twists that are being created as this happens are the proof. It's leaving me to wonder who I'm supposed to be to figure this out. I, have, I would have to be a very smart person. I would have to have a lot of skills to make this happen. So I'm here. I'm here. I've had spiritual um, things happen to me, whatever. I've had divine, that, divine guidance. That doesn't mean that it's not serious. Don't get me wrong, because it is. But like I said, it's serious to me personally, but that's not helping me to pay my bills. That's not helping me not to be desolate. That's not helping me from getting out of a very vulnerable situation, which I'm in right now. I'm helping myself. I'm very weary. I'm afraid for my life every day because this is a situation where you should be afraid of your life if you're a rational thinker. Because then it's like, all right, so all of these people know, but nobody's doing anything. So if somebody kills me, then nobody's gonna do anything because they're seeing it from a so proper point of view. They're seeing it from a basketball wives sort of view, an American gods kind of view or They're seeing it from a um, unrealistic point of view. Even though I am dealing with the supernatural, dealing with mystical things, I'm not fantasizing. I'm not in a fantasy. Everything that God reveals to me or allows me to discern off of somebody is to assist me in moving forward because the living human beings that inhabit this earth with me cannot see when the problem is serious, cannot see when their fellow brother or sister is in pain is willing to turn their back away from the pain, but gain off of the enormity that is God. And instead of showing fear for God and what he can do, they think that he is an ultimate producer of entertainment. I want to say that I'm salty. I want to say that I'm hurt. I want to say that I'm angry. I want to say that I want to say a lot of things. I want all of those things to be what I'm really feeling. But the truth is, that's not what I'm feeling. What I'm feeling is that I've been through this for a very long time. What I'm feeling is my bright son not having an opportunity to go to the best schools. What I'm feeling is the pain that my children feel when they're hungry. And when they're crying, what I'm feeling is the way that it stings when you're making fun of my family. 
when I'm an innocent person. What I'm feeling are the physical bruises that are on my body. What I'm feeling is that I'm running out of energy. What I'm feeling is God's grace to save me and to keep me well. What I'm feeling is the isolation that was supposed to break me. What I'm feeling is disrespect. I'm feeling the guilt that I'm supposed to be giving. I'm supposed to be handing it over and I'm supposed to be feeling it now. Because people don't want to take responsibility for their own actions. I'm feeling like I'm supposed to make sense of everybody's mental issues that's causing me to have mental issues now. Thank God I'm getting better. Thank goodness I've been sticking by him and getting better. I'm hearing everybody say, oh, I don't know her. Oh, I never mess with her. Oh, I never this. Oh, I never that. Oh, I never this. Or just talking crap just to talk crap because they can. Because this is their moment. This is the moment where they have an opportunity to do something like that to me. That's what I'm feeling. And I have the realization that based off of the way that things are going right now, justice may not be served. Because there are so many people who are taking bribes out there. I am coming to the realization, I came to the realization a long time ago that you're trying to control my life. You're trying to control what I can and can't do. You're trying to say that I'm not going to have this victory even though I am a victim. You're trying to say, Oh, you want to step up? You want to step up against our system? If you do that, nobody's going to help you. Nobody's going to be empathetic enough to realize that at any moment that could be them and their family. They're just going to take all that they can. And that's what it is. I already knew that though. So that's not a revelation to me. But that's why I'm taking my time. It's because I have to take my time because I'm my only support system. Right here, this is it. A mind undivided. A mind that knows that I am deserving of justice and love. A mind that knows that you love the wisdom that I drop. A mind, a 
soul that really understands my value. I don't need to make threats. I don't need to make mystical threats of what I can do, what I will do, what I want to do. I'm just feeling. I'm just feeling what you want me to feel and I'm moving forward. That's it. I'm not crying anymore based off of stress, off of not knowing which way the hits are coming. That's why I was crying. Let's get that straight. I'm not worried about men that I've rejected that feel like, oh, that's what she gets. I'm not worried about hating women who think, they don't know what you think because I don't hate on other women. I might come after you. If you strike that nerve, I might come after you, but I'm not going to hate on you. I'm worried about what's real. That you're messing with my family, that you're messing with my life, you're messing with my time. You're messing with everything. Doctors. <laughs> schools. Every aspect of my life. And I'm outnumbered. For sure. But I've been outnumbered this entire time. And I've been okay. I'm broke, but I'm okay. Let's not fake. Let's not act like we are celebrities that are making up our own stories, that we're, um, that we're people that we're not. You may be a great person. You're not me. You haven't gone through the things that I've gone through to be me. It's insulting. I'm insulted. I'm salty. But I'm not vengeful, revengeful, and I'm not going to avenge myself because I know that God is going to do that. You've done a lot. You've done a lot to say things about me that aren't true, to say that I'm a devil worshiper, to say that I'm doing black magic, to say that I'm doing a lot of things. But the truth is that even before this situation, I never spent time. I never spent my time gossiping about other people. I never spent my time trying to put other people down. I spent my time being focused on the things that matter to me and getting from point A to point B. There isn't a thing that you can say about me that I don't already know. There isn't a problem that I have that I cannot fix or figure out how to fix. This is to the crap talkers that have a little bit of money. Low level, high level, I don't give a fuck. I don't care about what your social status is. Be 
real with yourself. Be real with yourself, okay? What do you really care about? What are you basing your value upon? What do you put your value on? If I don't already possess that, I will. So who are you really talking to? You're talking to yourself. You're trying to convince yourself that you are better than me. I don't have to convince myself that I'm better than you. I don't want to be better than you. That would be insulting to me. See what I mean? Hmm. <laughs> 